In many parts of the world, mid-sized vans like these are the absolute default purchase for anybody who calls themselves a tradie. In Australia though, where the ute is otherwise king, these have emerged as a great solution for the owner-operator. And if you haven't driven one of these in the last 10 years, you will not believe how far they've come. They're incredibly popular around the world whenever anybody needs to move anything. And the medium van segment is gaining traction here as well, finally. Much of that has to do with the fact that the compromises of the older designs are largely consigned to history now, and the driving experience has never been better. Physically a little smaller than the others here, the Hyundai is very car-like to drive, which is a huge plus. The engine is powerful and flexible, although the interior lacks a little of the polish some buyers will be looking for. The iLoad is a three-seater, but that's compromised by having just a lap belt for the middle passenger when a lap sash belt is so much safer. With the iLoad, pretty much everything about it feels smaller than a lot of the other vehicles there. It feels more nimble to drive, for example, but then you pop the back and have a look inside it, and it is actually smaller. One of the issues with the iLoad is value. There are some areas where it just feels a little bit more down market, which is fine, it still gets the job done, but it should be more affordable. The engine in that iLoad is a real surprise package. It's got so much torque, it's just a really nice grunty engine. Gets the job done beautifully. The Hyundai iLoad is a bit of a mixed bag. It does have some compromises in terms of its loading capacity, and it does feel a little bit no frills on the inside. It's got the most comfortable seats and the best driving position, and you could easily be in that car for eight hours a day, no problems. It should perhaps come as no surprise that the European Renault should be a well-resolved piece of equipment. After all, in the traffic's home market, it's a very common sight. But what we weren't expecting of the traffic was its superb driveline smoothness and plush ride quality. Long days in the saddle won't be as taxing as they might be in less refined vehicles. The packaging is very clever with some seriously thoughtful touches and while the Renault is manual transmission only, it's also the cheapest van here by a handful of dollars. The traffic is genuinely streets ahead when it comes to refinement and it's surprisingly comfortable to ride in. You sort of got to remind yourself that it's only a 1.6 litre engine. There's a little bit of turbo lag there and it's got to work hard but it actually does a pretty good job pulling it along. So you've got sliding doors on both sides, it's got tie down points at three different heights and it's a decent size. And while I'm generally a fan of the cabin, you've got three seats, plenty of equipment, it looks like they've put some TLC into it. That infotainment system, fix it. Wow, the Renault Traffic really surprised in Drive's Commercial Vehicle of the Year awards for the medium van segment. It is a really refined and sophisticated car to drive. It's got great ride control, it carries load really well, and it's smart on the inside. However, it's limited by the fact that it is only available with a manual transmission. Our test T6 was fitted with VW's optional heavy duty suspension, but even then, a big load in the back can make the rear end feel a little bit floaty. The engine performs well, but contributes its share of noise, and the DSG transmission has a slight delay or lag between the driver issuing the orders and the gearbox falling into line. The interior probably looks better than it feels, but with autonomous emergency braking and a great driving position, the VW claws back some ground. There's no issue with the overall performance in the transporter, but the vibration from the engine is just a little bit too much. It doesn't have the refinement you expect in a Volkswagen. And you've then got issues with the DSG automatic transmission. It doesn't always hook up as cleanly as it should. The seating position in that T6 is one of the best in the business. Really car-like, you sit down in it, nice feel to the steering wheel, but then you start touching some of the bits inside and you realise that money has been saved, some hard plastics for example. The Volkswagen Transporter is one of the icons of this class and it will be a great work tool for those that choose it. It's huge in the back, it's got a great grunty diesel engine, but it is a little bit noisy under acceleration. And the DSG gearbox brings some of the limitations of that transmission. The Hi-Ace is an old design and it's really shown up as such by the newer designs it now competes with. The only true cab over design, the Toyota places the engine under the front seat creating a small cabin and a cramped driving position. The Hilux has a long load space as a result but it didn't appreciate a heavy load which made everything work harder and increased the already high levels of noise vibration and harshness. The world has moved on and the Toyota needs to follow suit. The High Ace is old school van and you feel that the minute you sit in it it hasn't got a whole lot of space for the occupants uh, and everything about it just looks and feels dated. The biggest problem with the high ace is where the engine is. You're sitting on it rather than having it in front of you. That compromises safety, it compromises comfort, and it compromises how much space you've got in the cabin. One area the high ace wins is in the length of the load area. It's amazing that the high ace is such a big seller and so popular because in so many ways it's outdone by its rivals, but that comes down to reputation. Toyota resale value is gold. 
The Toyota Hiace is a step back in time. That one box design brings with it a hell of a lot of compromises. It's hard to get into, you feel vulnerable with driving so close to the front of the car, it's noisy and you can hear every element of its mechanical underpinnings happening underneath you. A great seating position that places the driver high and mighty as well as good ride quality over small pattery bumps gives the Mercedes an edge in those departments. The engine that is a bit noisy under load quietens down appreciably at a steady cruise, although overall the power plant lacks a little punch, especially with a full load in the back. The Vito's biggest problem is its price tag, which blows out once you've added the driver assistance package and the automatic transmission of our test car. The Vito has a premium price tag and for that you sort of expect some, some luxury, some extra features and it doesn't have a whole lot of those so it struggles to live up to the, uh, the price tag. There are also other areas where you can see they've tried to save some money. No lining on the roof for example in the load area, even the foot operated handbrake, it's old school. The Vito brings an element of prestige with that Mercedes-Benz three-pointed star on its nose but it doesn't quite live up to the brand's hallmarks. The interior is a little bit cheap and the engine feels a little bit doughy on the road. And that means this car, the brand new Ford Transit, is drive's medium-sized van for 2018. But it almost wasn't. When we put this award together, this car wasn't actually on sale. But now that it is, we recommend you get into it. Given that Ford more or less invented the concept of a parcel van with conventional car dynamics, it stands to reason that the subsequent five plus decades of development have netted results. Ford has thought long and hard about how this vehicle will be used and has included clever touches like the adjustable roof rails, multifaceted exterior mirrors and storage spaces dotted around the cabin. The safety angle is covered off too with six airbags and a very OHS friendly tech pack which adds autonomous braking, pedestrian detection, active cruise control, blind spot and cross traffic monitoring and even tyre pressure monitoring. The driving experience doesn't let the side down either and with a punchy engine and smooth automatic transmission, the Transit is easy and vice free to pilot. The Ford Transit Custom 300S has a four cylinder turbo diesel engine that makes 96 kilowatts and 385 newton meters. It has a reversing camera and six airbags and the brilliant tech pack adds $1,600 to the $43,790 list price. At 958 kilograms, the Transit's cargo capacity is the lowest here, but will still be enough for most applications. It doesn't take you long to realize that this is a new design. It, it just feels newer than most of the rest of the vehicles here. Uh, it's, it's more refined, it's a little bit more sophisticated. The suspension is firm. It's certainly not the plushest riding vehicle that we've got here, but the damping is so well considered that it actually compensates for that. So you don't get a pogo stick ride down the road, and yet it will carry a decent load without being too compromised in the way it rides or handles. The motor does the job, it's not the quietest engine, it's not the smoothest engine, but it's absolutely up to speed and it works really well with this transmission, this, this automatic. But what you've really got to love about the Transit, I think, is that you can see evidence that Ford's thought about not just how they build the vehicle, but how people will use it. So there's some really, really clever things. And it's got some things that none of the others in this class have. It's got really good tie downs. It's got the double mirrors so you can see where the wheels are, or what you're about to run over or reverse over, as well as normal mirrors for traffic. Uh, it's got tons of storage space. There's some upstairs storage space, storage under the, under the passenger seat. And it's even got a, a little flap in the bulkhead between the cabin and the load area that you can slide really long things from the back of the vehicle right to up under the chair for the passengers. There's a huge storage area on the dashboard with a 12 volt plug, with a USB, and the doors are barn doors, which is great for forklift access. It's got a good interior too. It's got a great screen. There's nothing wrong with the way the, uh, the dashboard works. And the seats are comfy and there's great visibility out. So when you add all that up, you can really see that Ford's, yeah, they've, they've gone to that little bit extra effort and thought, how are people are gonna use this vehicle? Day after day, week after week, year after year. That's what sets it apart and that's why it's Drive's 2018 medium van of the year.